In the world of Formula One, few challenges are more intense than enduring the relentless pressure that comes with representing Ferrari. This is an undeniable and well-known reality, a fact that cannot be disputed, and one which has the power to overwhelm even the most promising drivers and engineers, regardless of their talent or potential. It is precisely one of the central issues behind Ferrari's long-standing difficulties in achieving consistent results. This immense pressure, both internal and external, contributes to the current struggle the Maranello-based team faces in attracting high-level engineering talent. Many experienced and skilled engineers and technical figures prefer to work in the more stable, structured, and performance-oriented environment offered by British-based Formula One teams, such as McLaren, Red Bull, and Mercedes. Loic Serra, formerly an influential figure within the Mercedes F1 team, is now serving as the technical director of the historic Italian racing team, Ferrari. This prestigious and strategically critical role was entrusted to him directly by the current team principal, Frederick Vasseur, who had temporarily taken on the position of technical director himself for over a full season in order to ensure the role would not remain vacant. The fact that such a significant responsibility has now been passed on to Loic. Sarah does not imply that he is not up to the task. On the contrary, he possesses the competence and experience needed. However, like any complex transition, it will require additional time for his influence to be fully reflected in the performance of the team. Loic Serra officially assumed his new position starting on the 1st of September, 2024. At that point, the development of the SF25, Ferrari's 2025 Formula One car, was already well underway and in an advanced stage. For this reason, it would not be accurate or fair to attribute the design philosophy of the SF25 entirely to Loic Serra's engineering approach or ideas. For the upcoming 2025 Formula One World Championship, the Ferrari engineers and technicians have made a bold and strategic decision to implement a significant change to the front end of the car by switching to a pull-rod front suspension system, a configuration that had previously been associated mainly with other teams such as Red Bull. The decision to adopt this pull-rod suspension architecture was primarily driven by technical considerations. With a pull-rod setup, engineers believed there would be increased potential for aerodynamic and mechanical development over the course of the racing season. Although this technical direction has been a topic of limited discussion throughout the year, the full impact of this change is still under evaluation. It remains uncertain whether this shift in suspension philosophy has produced the performance benefits that were originally anticipated. In contrast, the situation regarding the rear end of the SF25 is somewhat more defined, although it also presents its own challenges. Based on current analyses and technical hypotheses, it is likely that Ferrari is facing additional underlying problems. Believing that an update to the rear pushrod suspension system alone could solve all of these issues would be overly optimistic. The reality is that several deeper and more complex matters related to the car's overall setup philosophy and chassis balance cannot simply be resolved through suspension geometry changes alone. It is therefore essential to clarify one important aspect, especially given the volume of misinformation and inaccurate technical commentary currently circulating regarding Ferrari's latest suspension updates. Many sources have incorrectly speculated about the intentions behind this development. The main objective of this upgrade is not, as some have claimed, to enhance rear traction performance, a characteristic that Ferrari's current car, the SF25, is already known to manage well. On the contrary, the aim is completely different. There has been speculation that the update would increase the pro-squat effect during acceleration phases. In truth, Ferrari's engineers have designed the system to achieve the exact opposite outcome. In fact, the SF25 already exhibits a relatively pronounced degree of squat behavior during acceleration. This is due to its suspension geometry incorporating a less aggressive anti-squat configuration compared to that of key competitors such as McLaren and Red Bull Racing. The Ferrari car performs very effectively under throttle application when track-specific configurations demand it, as was particularly evident at the Shanghai International Circuit during the Chinese Grand Prix and at the tight and twisty Circuit de Monaco during the Monaco Grand Prix. However, Ferrari continues to face a recurring issue that has plagued its recent cars. The team has consistently struggled to find a satisfactory balance between mechanical grip and aerodynamic efficiency. This is primarily due to the car's extremely narrow and sensitive setup window. 
As a result, engineers have had difficulty optimizing performance across a wide range of track conditions and corner profiles. Because of this setup limitation, it has been virtually impossible for Ferrari to effectively optimize the SF25 across different types of corners, such as slow-speed hairpins, medium-speed sweeps, and high-speed bends. To address this limitation, Ferrari has developed an all-new floor for the SF25, with the goal of providing greater flexibility and balance in the car's aerodynamic behavior. In parallel, the updated rear suspension has been specifically engineered to allow the team to run ground clearance values that are closer to the original design targets and aerodynamic reference planes. The combination of the updated floor and the new rear suspension is expected to result in a more stable aerodynamic platform. This improvement should help ensure that the SF25 consistently generates the appropriate amount of downforce across various sections of a circuit and under different dynamic conditions, thereby enhancing overall car performance and driver confidence. According to Ferrari's initial internal plans, the rear suspension update was scheduled to be introduced at the British Grand Prix held at Silverstone Circuit. However, as confirmed in recent days, the debut of the new rear pushrod suspension will now take place at the Belgian Grand Prix at Circuit de Spa-Francorchamps. This delay is particularly noteworthy when considering the progress made by rival teams. For instance, Mercedes already introduced their own version of a revised rear suspension at the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix in Imola, approximately two and a half months before Ferrari's expected deployment. The delayed implementation of Ferrari's aerodynamic update raises some important questions. Two main factors may have contributed to this postponement. The first possibility is a relatively straightforward explanation. Ferrari may have faced internal difficulties in designing and engineering the new suspension system quickly enough. From a mechanical standpoint, producing the new suspension components does not normally require an extended period of time. The second and potentially more significant explanation involves recent changes within the organization. Specifically, the departure of Enrico Rocca, the former head of supply chain and manufacturing at Ferrari, could have had an impact. Enrico Rocca left his position midway through the 2025 Formula One season, most likely as a result of internal dissatisfaction with his handling of upgrade logistics and component delivery timelines. Part of the truth behind this delay might lie in this development. Considering that Enrico Rocca's role was directly connected to the production and timely implementation of technical updates, his sudden departure could have disrupted the upgrade schedule. Now, all attention turns to the circuit de Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium, where the revised rear suspension will finally make its on-track debut. This legendary and technically demanding circuit will provide an ideal testing ground to evaluate the true effectiveness of Ferrari's latest suspension update, and the data gathered there will be crucial in determining whether the changes deliver the intended performance improvements.